Let's take a look at how badges and especially badges in a new portfolio infrastructure can be alternative ways for learners to demonstrate their skills and go beyond just the representation of knowledge but also of understanding and applying. One of the ways to do that is to take a look at badges as a way to signify um, an achievement or a skill specifically online digital badges. And so what digital badges happen to be are these tokens or these representations of an achievement. And what they usually represent is not just the understanding and the knowledge, but the ability to apply. Um, a, a, and they often lend themselves to performance tasks that go beyond the tradi traditional assessments. So in a infrastructure that has digital badges, there are the earners, the, the learners who participate and gain the knowledge and the understanding and then show that by applying it. They're the issuers, the traditional institutions of learning and others who will um, create that infrastructure for the students, participants to learn. And then the displayer, which means once the, uh, the participant has been able to show that they understand through that performance task, they then can display that digital badge on their e-portfolio or sometimes on their social media sites. What's nice about digital badges is that they usually are set up so that when anybody comes to visit the site, that visitor can click on the badge and the badge usually takes them out to the performance task that signifies the, uh, the skill. So there's a nice connection there. Another way to think about um, and get a better grasp on what badges are doing in, the, in this digital environment is to look at well, the Smithsonian quests. So if you go ahead and Google Smithsonian Quest, you'll see that the Smithsonian for free has um, this site where learners can come on in and they can become the arts advocate um, badge earner, or they can become the tree hugger and do a series of um, tasks to show that they've learned um, and met some competencies around being a tree hugger. I think for me, I would come in and try to do the time traveler, I'm curious what um, kind of skills and understandings I'd need and ways to demonstrate that. But that's interesting. Many of you are probably familiar with Khan Academy and they use badges in a different way. Those badges are markers of sort of a learning progression, if you will, and, and movement forward on some of the um, activities within the Khan infrastructure. Um, higher Ed is using it. Here's an example of Purdue University. Their passport system is a way for students to show what they know um, via digital badges. And even the entire Scotland infrastructure has announced recently that they're participating in um, badges as an alternative credentialing tool so that folks can show learning progression, um, staff development, teacher education. Let's go even more fine-grained and I'll show you some of the, the, um, the reasons why badges and portfolio systems um, are, are interesting and hold some potential. I had the pleasure of working with a math teacher, um, eighth grade math teacher, Lisa Therian at Harwood Union High School. Harwood Union, excuse me, Lisa Therian at Harwood Union Middle School. She partnered with us and we used a system called Badge Stack. It's a learning management system, if you will, and what she ended up doing was creating a series of badges. You'll see her Fermi project and another one, It's All About Me, where students come in, they log into the system, and they work toward earning the badges. Uh, the system is gamified and so that some badges can lead to certain points and so they can see themselves on their leaderboard. And then there's also within this infrastructure a way for students to blog about their learning. BadgeOS is the um, site that we've used. It's from Learning Times and uh, in order to work within the learning management system. And here are some of the, the, um, the reasons why this is a worthy endeavor, I think, or for you to start thinking about alternative credentialing. Part of it within a learning management system like that is that it reinforces teachers to backwards design. I'll show you an example of that, but they have to think exactly about what the student needs to do, not just to understand, in order to be able to earn the badge. In this kind of infrastructure, there's also a way to uh, reward community building activities. Um, teachers also have to think differently about assessment, and formative assessment rises to the top in this kind of an infrastructure. Badging in the learning management system can support differentiation. And again, I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. And then there's a huge potential for democratizing the learning will be another example of that. So let's take the backwards design first. 
in the Badge Tech Learning uh, site, or now Badge OS, which is a WordPress installation. Teachers, when they go to create the badges and their quests that lead to the badges, have to backwards design, like I said before, and so it makes it super clear what the students have to do in order to show what they know. There's a different types of badges can be um, instituted. So there are the content badges that you just saw, and then there can be these community building badges as well. And those community building badges in this um, installation led to point learnings. And although uh, the point leaderboard lends itself to competition, everything that the students needed to do were um, built around the idea of building a community and sharing and some good digital citizenship. Formative assessment um, is highlighted in this kind of an infrastructure or system. So there's no uh, grade book per se within this learning management system. Instead, what teachers do is they either approve or they defer. And whether you're approving or deferring, there are, there's the comment feature there. So students have to keep submitting and submitting and submitting until they reach approval, um, not necessarily an 82.5. This math teacher made it clear via the badge and the associated quests what students needed to do when they were thinking about um, mathematical reasoning. And so each one of the quests is a, a specific learning outcome and the quests lead to activities or, or have those activities that lead students into being able to show what they know and can do. This teacher did was she took it a step further within this learning management system, which I thought was worth pointing out. She asked the students to self-assess so when they were thinking about linear relationships and the work that they had done, they were coming in and they could choose the, the quest that best met where they felt they happened to be in terms of their understanding. So they could either enter the quest by knowing that they needed to do some reteaching and review, they could practice, or they could stretch the idea, and each one of the assignments was specific to where they happened to be. So, of course, the materials um, were differentiated for them in that way. On this badge stack site, students were able to see with those a drop down which achievements they had earned in a visual way like that. So it was encouraging for them to continue to be earning the badges. Moving you out of that system now because I wanted to show another example of how a badging infrastructure outside of badge stack can work to democratize learning. So P2PU offered a course last summer and they partnered with the National Writing Project. The students in the course came together and it was a week long course and what they did in the very first day was identify some of the skills they wanted to, at the end of the week, have um, had mastered. They created their own badges around each one of those skills, and then they set themselves up to be peer reviewers for each other's uh, submissions. And so at the end of the week, they could all come together having um, supported and judged each other and then given the badges to each other. Some folks sometimes wonder a little bit about um, portfolios and even badges as some kind of a glorified um, way to kind of do what we've always done. Uh, my answer to that is I encourage you to be thinking about how badging and the earning, earning of badges can shift that a little bit, um, especially when you can put it within a learning management system and it's not necessarily just a token um, badge that just kind of takes the place of the A or the B. When working with a, a number of teachers who have implemented this, their response is that there's really only mastery because there's that approval and, uh, and only approval or deferring. There's no, I'm going to turn this in and be happy with my C. It really only gets passed and recognized with the badge when there's the A and it meets the standard. The other piece to remind you of is that in um, rather than a transcript where you just see a percentage or a letter grade, what a digital badge will do is link out to the performance task and if it's good and robust to the criteria upon which it was judged. So that gives um, that gives folks who want to see what students, not just what they know but what they can do, a real visual way to be able to see that and that it doesn't necessarily have to be the teachers in a hierarchical way um, 
expecting students to do certain things. Students can come and co-create badges and we imagine a world where um, in a personal learning plan and personalized environments where there can be a mentor relationship where um, or even a parent relationship where specific learning goals are established in the form of a badge and then earned in that way. So in any portfolio system what happens is that the students show what they know through some, a performance task, earn a digital recognition of that, keep that in their digital backpack, and then they have a way to go ahead and display that. Imagine a portfolio system where those badges come to represent the body of knowledge of a student over a span of a course, or even over a span of um, a year, or connected somehow to a graduation requirement. We imagine badges as a way to recognize not only students learning within the school, but also outside of the school. So if you can think about it, a portfolio system, or I encourage you to think about it, a portfolio system where students can collect a series of badges from not only uh, courses within their school, but also the Smithsonian Quest or other um, institutions of learning or peer-to-peer -peer learning, where they can recognize not only knowledge and understanding, but application of that. And that becomes the new transcript, if you will. So thanks for listening and thinking about alternative credentialing in a badge-fed ePortfolio system.